Welcome to BoundariesForEffectiveMinistry.org and our four-part series on the Garden of Gethsemane and the Second Amendment. God's law, Thou shalt not murder, makes plain that there is no God-given right to initiate violence against others. In this video, we lay the scriptural foundation for the right to bear arms for self-defense. In video two, we look at what the Second Amendment actually says because it does not speak of government fictions such as assault rifles. In video three, we'll look at how government creates fictional terms for arms in order to control them. No government statute forbids the bearing of arms. In video four, we show how Christians who advocate gun control, except for government workers, of course, violate God's law by infringing on others' right to life. So let's get started. Did Jesus ever initiate violence? No, he never did. But what about when he cleansed the temple and went after the money changers? He was defending the integrity of God's house against crimes that were already in progress. Well, did Jesus promote violence as a policy for his disciples? No, he never did that. But what about the Garden of Gethsemane, where Peter lopped off the ear of a servant? His warning to Peter was, if you live on the offense by the sword, you will die by the sword. So did Jesus forbid his disciples to arm themselves? No, he didn't do that either. In fact, what he did was he actually told them to sell their cloaks and to buy swords. Well, isn't that a bit of a contradiction? Nope, it's not a contradiction at all. His instruction was to arm for self-defense. It was not a rallying cry to initiate violence. We have a God-given right to life, and so we may bear arms to defend our lives. But we may not go on the offensive and murder others. So is this a contradiction, a cross, an epistle? No, it's not a contradiction either, because you can bear the cross and bear arms without contradicting yourself. When arms are used only for defense, then they and the cross are both peacemakers. The cross can be an offensive weapon to commit genocide, as in the Crusades against Islam. Someone brandishing arms without the need for self-defense is actively on the offense, initiating violence. Even a kiss can be used as a deadly offensive weapon in a murder plot. As history shows, being armed is passive and defensive and a deterrent to violence. Neither Hitler nor the Japanese emperor would attack the American mainland because the people were defensively armed, so the emperor attacked Hawaii, a safe target for offensive aggression. Goliath, armed for an offensive strike against Israel, was confronted by David, who was armed defensively with five stones and a slingshot, and who killed Goliath in defense of the Israelites. As history shows, keeping and bearing arms is passive and defensive. Using arms as weapons is active, predatory, and offensive. As scripture shows, the God-given right to life establishes the corollary right to defend our gift of life. Well, there you have it. Thanks for watching. BoundariesForEffectiveMinistry.org